Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have with us three former officials of the government of India who signed the statement among the 87 who stated that the Bulanshar case is a particularly unfortunate one because it calls into question the sanctity of the state itself and the process of governance in the country. We have with us Ambassador Fabian, we have Mr. Jaiswal and we have with us Mr. Burra who have all been signatories to this letter and also earlier letters that have been written. Mr. Burra, what caused you to take particularly this case of Bulanshar up? Why do you think it is in some way uh, an issue that the former officials particularly need to intervene on? We were uh, uh, deeply upset by the fact that, uh, you know, this kind of violence and thuggery have been, I think we have said, mainstreamed into, the, into governance. We are 130 plus today from different services, from different departments, ministries we have worked in. We call ourselves constitutional conduct. Our focus has been on the violation of uh, constitutional ethics, constitutional morality. And what happened here seemed to mark a new low. A police officer, an honest police officer, he was the one who investigated the Aklak case. He was transferred in the middle. Uh, he was doing an honest investigation. And uh, once again here he was trying to control the mob and he is actually killed. And uh, the government of Uttar Pradesh is interested much more in who is slaughtering cows rather than the murder of uh, somebody who represents the state. We thought this uh, really marked, uh, you know, uh, some very significant deviation from past malpractices. It's not that these things have not been happening, but the way it is being done, the way the cover-up is being attempted. and. Last night I was on a show with these two young boys, heart-rending his sons, and they had only a simple request. They said, uh, you, you, you are focusing on cows. The, the lives of cows are important, but our father, he was a police officer, and it is 16, 17 days, and nobody has been picked up. In fact, these people are, uh, you know, broadcasting videos, the, the accused. So I think th this was the reason that hate and violence are being sponsored by the state, cover-ups are being done. And it seemed a, another, to, to lift another phrase from the left, it's, it's the rule of lawlessness. So this is, this is what you think is a new law in governance in the country. You know, the questions that uh, his sons have said that 22 cows, this is the what one of the, I think the MLAs have said, 22 yes, yes. cows are more important yes. than the lives of two people, two people. Two people. And the issue is not of two people. One of them is functioning as representing the state at that point. Do you see, for instance, when the chief minister says that it's a conspiracy that is actually in execution, and the DGP supports this talk about conspiracy. And the conspiracy is what about cows? The conspiracy is not about human beings, common rights, and so on. Do you think this, you'll be the serving government official for a long no, time? In fact, I would, I would uh, endorse what the chief minister says. It is uh, the outcome of a conspiracy. But what kind of conspiracy? What are the objectives? What are the underlying motives behind the conspiracy? See, it's a, it's a standard practice, it's an established drill that you uh, uh, dump uh, the body parts of pigs in front of mosques, you dump uh, body parts of cows in front of temples, and that's a sure shot remedy for uh, communal right. fomenting uh, communal uh, discord and uh, uh, stoking communal fires. So this has happened here. And uh, uh, the proof that uh, Bajrang Dal uh, local convener uh, names four people and, he's, and he, he claims to be eyewitness to what they were doing 
and they were picked up by the police and the police investigated and the police uh, found them uh, innocent of any wrongdoing and has had to release them. So it shows that, uh, you know, there, there was, was indeed a conspiracy. Yes, there was indeed a conspiracy. But then what needs to be uh, done is to uh, entrust this inquiry into the whole affair uh, to uh, an independent uh, agency, uh, preferably monitored by the court. And that's what we have asked for in our uh, letter. Only that will uh, reveal the true facts. That apart, I think what uh, needs to be underlined is that uh, policing in UP is not easy. I have uh, spent most of my career in UP, so I know what kind of challenges uh, they are up against. And one of the challenges uh, that the police in UP face is uh, uh, that of uh, uh, changing the popular perception that uh, they have some ingrained biases, uh, biases against uh, the minority uh, community, biases against uh, lower caste people. I mean, th those, those are, th that's an image that they find it very difficult to live down. They also have to exercise uh, the ghost of uh, Hashimpura and uh, other communal conflicts in which uh, uh, their uh, uh, majoritarian uh, uh, aptitude uh, inclination has been exposed. So uh, a genuine effort is being made to uh, change this kind of mindset. And if during this process, a message is uh, coming from the uh, top echelons of the uh, state government that uh, not only they should uh, stop uh, acting in an independent and impartial manner, they should actively further the uh, major majoritarian agenda or else they'll, they would meet the fate of Subodh Kumar Singh. And that would be a very, very unfortunate thing. So this is what has really distressed us and uh, impelled us to uh, take this action. Take this public position. Yes, public of position. course, now we are being linked to the award wapsi gang, as yes. it has been called. Mr. Fabian, you know, if we look at a little bit at a distance, the Indian constitution and the Indian, shall we say, the law and order machinery, a degree of impartiality, though it was never really fully impartial, it was always implicit complicit in certain things as well, but at least a distance from the political immediate authority has also distinguished the Indian state from, shall we say, a number of other newly independent countries who came after the decolonization process. Do you see now we are sort of becoming, shall we say, uh, more of a carpet-bagging state? Whoever wins the election then can decide what is to be done for the rest of the uh, five years, including deciding what const, const, constitutes the constitution itself? Yes, I'm afraid uh, that trend is there. And even in the present case, uh, I was reading yesterday or today, Dr. Subramanya Swami saying that you cannot ask for the resignation of uh, the Ch UP chief minister because he was elected. In other words, the presumption is that once you are elected, you are there till the next election, and you can do anything you like. Now, I don't think that is an ingredient of democracy. And let me put it this way. We are a constitutional democracy. And uh, while the political power holders come and go, there is also a permanent bureaucracy, a bureaucracy which, is, uh, which has taken the oath to uphold the constitution, and that bureaucracy has an essential role to play. And that is what, uh, in the case of UP, one of the other points we have made in our letter is that uh, that bureaucracy can play that role better. I'm putting it mildly. That bureaucracy is not playing its role. So to go back, you know, once selected, anointed. Wrong. Hitler too was elected. So let's not get into that part of it, you know. And Why do national we... law establish that illegal orders are not to be carried out? That's right. And also, why do we have a state? I mean, let's go to the fundamentals, you know. Without the state, you will have a war of all against all. 
Now we have a state to have order, to have certain values, so that people can live in peace. You know, that's why state has a monopoly of violence, technically. But now what we are witnessing in UP, it is not the state uh, which has the monopoly of violence, but uh, mobs. Mobs who are, shall we say, protected by the state, because when the state refuses to take consequential action, that is protection. So that is what is uh, upsetting us, and that is what we should all take note of. Now, these are very, shall we say, fighting words that you were saying, that it's not the elected government, but the constitution which is supreme. And in that sense, you are representing the constitutional values which must prevail over even if a majoritarian verdict comes, the constitutional values of the state has to override that. Now, is it possible for the serving officials to confront the, shall we say, the elect, elected representatives if Gujarat is the model? And we can see even today a former uh, police officer who retired has been sought to be charge sheeted and uh, we also have Sanjay Bhatt's case, he's behind bars. We have other police officers who came out against the Gujarat riots and who have suffered victimization in different kinds. So do you think the spine of the Indian bureaucracy is also being broken under with such attacks? Uh, yes, I think you are you're right considering what is happening. But coming back to the point that he made and you also referred to, uh, about how India was different from other post-colonial states. And this comes to what many of us often speak about, Sadar Patel's uh, giving of uh, constitutional protection to civil services. So you can't fire us at will. Uh, you can't hire us at will. You, you have a constitutional procedure, the Union Public Service Commission, and to remove people is not easy. So. This is the protection we give. So our feeling is that this kind of protection should embolden people to obey the constitutional dictates. The fact is that that doesn't happen because people want, you know, promotions, they want good postings, they, uh, they, they, are, yeah, they are afraid of being transferred somewhere to the boondocks. And I mean, and after something like what happens here, you may be worried about your life. I mean, and here, I frankly, I mean, since people accuse us of being political and so on, this has happened in regimes of different uh, political parties in different states and at the center. So <clears throat> I think unless this some kind of collective a pre the core, you know, is, uh, is encouraged and people come together. It will be difficult for individuals. There have been many individuals, as you yourself named some of them from Gujarat, and we know people who have, uh, you know, uh, foregone promotions or postings to keep their uh, principles intact. But I think it will be unrealistic to expect individuals, though we hope they do, unless there is some kind of collective, the associations of officers and so on need to speak up. You know, once upon a time I used to say, if a person is wearing a uniform, he confronts a crowd, the crowd used to back off. That was the Indian democracy we had. You, did, you have probably the least number of police, police personnel uh, to people in almost all countries you can think of. Our ratio is very, very low. That is the sanctity of the uniform. Do you think in this particular case that has got Mr. Subodh uh, Singh being lynched in this, in this particular, yes, it's shot certainly, in this particular certainly way? certainly accelerate uh, this uh, lack of, uh, uh, the, the, the process of erosion of uh, the authority of the police. It's been, it's been uh, uh, yes, in evidence for quite some time. You would recall some time ago, an IPS officer in uniform was mowed down by uh, the Sand Gang uh, mafia. Ma mafia in Madhya Pradesh, serving police officer, IPS officer. Then uh, in uh, De Delhi, 
closer home we have had several cases of uh, people you know uh, ramming the uh, barrier and then dragging the policemen on duty so this has happened but now it will get a fillip it will get uh, a shot in the arm because this kind of thing has not happened a police officer on duty being lynched and then uh, the chief minister dismissing it uh, as uh, an accident or minimizing it in various other ways so this will certainly be a big setback uh, of course i mean with this caveat that i served during gentler times i retired in 2004 but it was it didn't take uh, any great uh, moral courage for one to uh, resist an illegal order if an order was perceived as illegal then one would say that it is illegal and cannot be illegal but now things have changed as sundar says so maybe it is it becomes uh, difficult you you have to find strength in uh, collective action i'm going to ask all of you the same question mm. what is the way forward both for officials who are serving those who have retired and those the lesser mortals like us who are just you know people live the country okay. <laughs> you see democracy implies an intelligent citizenry it implies that voters can vote with good judgment now if voters can be fooled either by oratory uh somebody's uh, what is it called uh, you know so charming so convincing you know uh bashan 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 well then that is uh, you know a real danger to democracy one can use democratic means to install a non democratic non democratic regime basically for a society for a democratic polity to be mature we need intelligent voters so that is the first requirement i know it will take time but i think we are hopefully we can move forward and we have seen recently the elections state the elections state, state elections. elections you know i have been recently reading some some books and ab- about how democracies fail and like he was saying and you were mentioning today it's not as if overnight the army marches into the capital and the president is deposed and a new man put in people get elected but what they do is and this is a nice phrase that i have been coming across the institutions of democracy are being whittled away at you know every single institution so you know i don't think there is one sort of catch all answer we can give but what we have to see is for each institution what can you do in some small way you know call out whenever it is being uh, call these institutions out mount public campaigns mount pressure to see that these institutions fall in line i mean you may be successful you may not be successful that's a different thing but whether it is trump's uh, america or india today this is what is happening the institutions of democracy are being deliberately weakened in fact people say there's an informal emergency in india we have a constitution we have the rule of law we have all these things but in practice the media are uh, under threat the uh, we had organized a conclave where the former vice president spoke about legislatures we have seen how they are being uh, they from being what they are supposed to be holding the state the executive to account they they are not doing that at all i mean for a variety of reasons so how can we build coalitions organizations pressure to see that these uh, perform it must make all attempts to bring these institutions back into line as a small example i'm not saying it's been successful at all that recently we had written an open letter to the comptroller and auditor general saying you have delayed the uh, submission of reports on rafael and demonetization though you have completed all the audit of 
all other expenditure till the end of 2017. It is still pending. They have not yet finalized it. You see, the, what I feel is also people like us, we are also offering support to good people and institutions, you know. So you think spaces still exist which we should take advantage of? Absolutely. Can engage yes. on and, those spaces. Engage and resist this whole attempt to uh, accept something as normal which is abnormal, you know. We have to look at the structural causes of uh, the decline of these institutions of governance. One way uh, that the uh, powers be have been playing with the institutions of governance is through the process of appointment. So, it's only in the more recent uh, legislations uh, which have uh, dealt with the institutions of governance that some kind of procedure has been laid down incorporated in the law. The constitutional authorities have been left to the unfettered discretion of uh, the executive. So, they can uh, appoint whomsoever they like, they do not have to uh, adhere to any norms, no qualifications are laid down. So, it is absolute discretion, unfettered discretion. So, and we have seen how that instrument, the power of appointment is used by government to uh, denature these uh, uh, bodies. I will end with this note that our generation, all of us in different vintages do belong to this generation, faced the emergency and actually the Indian institutions did come back after the distortion of the emergency. And as you said, we have an informal emergency today, not of that open kind, but certainly a subterranean one, which is surfacing now in terms of lynchings and muzzling of people in different ways. I think this generation, including all of us, have to respond to this emergency. And this is going to be a different response than what our generation probably did against the Mrs. Gandhi's emergency at that time. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. And we would like to engage more with you and what you are doing, what you are thinking, because I think this, for our viewers, is a very, very important part of what, why they come to NewsClick and what they would, what is it that we can all do to change the course of what is happening today. Thank you very much Thank for being you. with us. Thank you.